Well, it's still August 31st. It's, uh, I guess, 10 to 6 now. We're done with our walking today. And we're in this beautiful bay. Uh, we're sitting here on Waswagening Bay on Lake Superior on the Grand Portage Reservation, okay. the northeast tip of Minnesota. And my home, this is where I live, where I grew up. What was the bay? Is it the same this the same bay that you grew up on or is there a different name on the other side? Um, well, I, I grew up on Grand Portage Bay, which okay. we're sitting on Hat Point right now, which runs about another half mile out from us here. Okay. And then around that point is Grand Portage Bay and that's where it's where I live now and it's where I grew up. Okay, so what was it like? I mean, I'm jealous. I think most people would be to have this kind of scenery every morning. What was it like as a kid to grow up on this lake? It, it was pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, my dad is from the Twin Cities. He grew up down there and I, I can't imagine having the childhood that I did here mm -hmm. growing up in a place like that. I mean, mm -hmm. he grew up in the northern suburb of Minneapolis and mm -hmm. I just, the stuff that was available to us here, I can't imagine not having that by growing up in the city, by having the lake and having the woods and all the rivers and streams, the sand beaches on Grand Portage Bay, which on the North Shore is kind of a rare thing. Really? It's a really nice sand beach. It's a shallow bay. Huh. Um, so, so you could actually go swimming in yeah, the summer? Yeah, the water gets nice and warm back in the corner of the bay. Uh -huh. Whereas out here, it's freezing cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the time. Yeah. Even this summer, when with the lake temperature warmer, it would still be too cold out here, I would guess. Yeah, probably. Actually, the islands we're looking at across the bay, um, those are the Suzy Islands. And I have gone, well, I wouldn't call it swimming. Um, <laughs> Some friends and myself have jumped into the lake out there, but we got out of the water as quick as we got into it because yeah. it was so cold. So you, you can jump in and swim for a few seconds, but it's not something you stay in. Right. Whereas okay. on the other side of the point here, you know, we would, we would spend all day in the water. Really? Yeah. Well, we've seen a lot of people, a lot of people swimming this summer in various days on the Canadian side, because that's where we were during the heat of the summer. So kind of surprising because that's not how we think of this lake either, is it? Right. swimming lake. But anyway, you uh, grew up here and now you, you still live on this bay, on your original bay. And yep, on Grand Portage Bay. And you, and you work at the state park? Yep, I work at Grand Portage State Park and um, we are actually in the midst of a, of a big change at the park. We have a brand new visitor center. Mm -hmm. um, the park was established in 1989, um, but ever since then we've just been operating out of um, an old double wide trailer, basically, just a, a really small home that was it was sitting on a, a block foundation, but it was an old double wide trailer, mm -hmm. just really getting run down. Mm -hmm. And for the first time we have a nice new visitor center that will have an exhibit hall that focuses on the cultural history of mm -hmm. the Grand Portage Band. Mm -hmm. So in, um, what are we, August 31st today? Mm -hmm. Grand opening is September 25th. It's yeah. under a month away. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it because it's a beautiful park, especially with the high falls yep. and the trails. Yeah, the, uh, there's a couple of waterfalls in the park, but high falls is the main feature. That's the tallest waterfall in Minnesota. Really? Uh, about 120 feet high. Is it uh, been kind of running? It's been very well, low this yeah, year. Yeah, not much rain. Even this spring, we didn't have much runoff. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't know if, if where you guys are, you probably didn't have any snow either in March. Nope, yeah. not a drop of snow. March, which is usually one of the snowiest months, we had nothing. We had maybe half an inch or an inch yeah. of snow up here. I remember us. April didn't have posting. any rain, and consequently the uh, the river never got very high this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you go up there, it's just a trickle of the falls. Wow. Um, I was going to say that, that you work at the park, but really your passion is your photography. Photography, yep. And uh, you've been doing that for how many years now? Um, well, I, I first started taking pictures in high school, um, ninth, maybe tenth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've really only been seriously into it for about the last six years, maybe seven. Mm -hmm. And I do a fair amount of traveling along with that now. Most of it's focused around here, around mm -hmm. Grand Portage and, mm -hmm. and Lake Superior, especially. Mm -hmm. I love shooting shoreline images at sunrise and sunset um, but another big 
thing I've gotten into is nighttime photos. Mm -hmm. And beautiful images. By that I mean star trails mm -hmm. um, or shots where I just do a half minute to get the stars to freeze. Uh -huh. um, but I do like doing two to three hour star trail images. Uh -huh. And northern lights, moonlight, um, lightning. Mm -hmm. I've actually been trying for the last few years to catch lightning over this bay. My dad, who was a very good photographer in his own right, and a lot of where my influences come from, has the coolest lightning shot probably you'll ever see right over this bay. And I have yet to see lightning strike the way it has in that image of his. And he shot that on slide film years ago. Oh no. Um, of course, I shoot all digital now. Um, what is so people can find your pictures on the web? What? What's yep, I have a website. It's uh, TravisNovitsky.com. You can also find it by Googling Grand Portage Photos. Okay. Um, and it'll be the first match if you Google Grand Portage Photos or pictures, images, any of those three. Uh -huh. I know and on, you're on Facebook, and so uh, that's yep. how I often see most of your images when you talk about paddling out in your kayak at night. Yeah. And, uh, photography is the main reason why I'm on Facebook to share images mm -hmm. and consequently I have a lot more people that I'm in contact with on there because of that mm -hmm. than I would otherwise. Right. Most people that are on my friend list are there because they want to see the new photos. Right. Right. So I go out take pictures, post the link on my site and then link to it on Facebook so everybody can see it right away. Yeah. It's, it's really a neat way to get stuff out there. It is. It's an amazing yeah. social network. Yeah. Um, do you have any big concerns about this lake and its future? Well, yeah, I do. I do wonder, especially in the last few years with all this talk about global warming and, and in our lifetimes, well, me, I'm still pretty young. I'm in my early 30s, but mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, I've seen the lake get lower than I ever remember it being growing up. And some of my elders, my grandparents and aunts and uncles, mm -hmm. have seen it get the lowest it's ever gotten. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of scary. Like these rocks that are right here. Yeah. Right now, they're sticking out of the water quite a bit. Ten years ago, you could hardly walk out on these rocks. Huh. Wow. Because, That's a uh, lot of water. The I water see. was a lot higher then. You know? And mm -hmm. it fluctuates every year, of course. Mm -hmm. And typically spring is when it's the lowest. Oh, yeah. So you might see these rocks sticking out of the water in the spring, but by this time of year, they're only sticking out a few inches. But as you can see now, we're at the end of August, and mm -hmm. there's still a lot of rocks sticking out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So I worry about that a little. Um, on different levels, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, you see stuff like that happening, and you see some of these sandy bays that all of a sudden have 50 feet of shoreline where before they had 10. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, kind of worrisome. We saw a lot of that in, in our walk this summer, too, that's for yeah. sure. Actually, for us, it, the low water level was a, a, a benefit. We could walk in places that right. we never could before. but. For the lake's health, we don't. We know that's not necessarily it, a good it's thing. It's neat for photography too. Like <laughs> I can get down here and get vantage points on the shoreline that I couldn't otherwise mm -hmm, get. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're realizing that it's not a good thing that the right. water, that the lake has lost that much water. Ecosystems. Well, uh, I really recommend people go and look at your pictures because they do express a lot of emotion about this lake.